Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God has given us unlimited treasures in His Word. Every time we open it, we can discover a new treasure or admire an old one. What will we find today? Here's Carla Early with Treasure Hunt in the Word. When I was in junior high, I remember walking down the hall before school with a girl I'd grown up with and went to church with. She was a leader in the youth group, and I greatly respected her. Until the moment she stopped and let out several cuss words followed by, I forgot my homework. Fortunately for her, we had plenty of time before school started to call her mom to bring her homework for her, but I had to confront her with her language. She seemed shocked that I thought anything odd about it. Of course she wouldn't say those words at church on Sunday or Wednesday night, but this was school on Monday morning, and I shouldn't be such a nitpicker, she said. I've always remembered that moment when I realized what hypocrisy meant. Of course I'd heard of it before, but I'd never seen it played out like that. God sent Jeremiah to confront the people of his day right at the entrance of the temple, probably on one of their feast days, when people from all over Judah visited. He said in Jeremiah 7, 9-11, Will you steal and murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, burn incense to Baal and walk after other gods whom you do not know, and then come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, We are safe. Safe to do all these detestable things. Has this house which bears my name become a den of robbers to you? But I've been watching, declares the Lord. God had originally promised them protection if they followed him and obeyed his word. So far, the Lord had kept his end of the bargain. He had spared Judah from Israel's fate in 722 BC, and again when Sennacherib attacked in 701. But God had made it clear that his promise of protection was conditional. Once they began oppressing others, obscuring justice, or worshiping other gods, the deal was off. In fact, here in this passage, he mentions six of the Ten Commandments that they had flagrantly been breaking on a regular basis. Then they'd shamelessly come to the temple to worship God just as if everything was fine. Remember how Jesus drove those who were buying and selling out of the temple and said, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. This is where he got that den of thieves part. The Jews of Jesus' day were doing the same thing the people of Jeremiah's day were doing, and the same thing people still do today. They were being hypocrites. Now, I'm not saying everyone at your church is a hypocrite or that even you are, I'll leave that between you and the Lord. But it's widespread enough for many unbelievers to dismiss church and Christians as a bunch of hypocrites. When an unbeliever works with someone who professes to follow Christ and then cheats in their business, has a dirty mouth, or treats other people in a negative way, they have a good reason for not wanting any part of that person's religion. After all, they say, I'm better than that guy and I don't even have religion. The Jews of Jeremiah's day and the Jews of Jesus' day had become bad representatives to the world of who God is. Their actions were no different than the way other cultures acted and treated each other. Yet they thought that they were safe, that either God didn't see the bad things they did or he didn't care. But as the Lord tells them in verse 11, he says, I have been watching. And he's not going to let them go unpunished. The Jews of Jeremiah's day had their temple destroyed, their land plundered, and their people taken off to Babylon. The Jews of Jesus' day had the temple destroyed, their land plundered, and many of them taken captive, so that it was almost 2,000 years before they became a nation again. Hypocrisy is a dangerous, destructive thing. Is anything in your life hypocritical? What will you do about it? You can contact us at treasurehuntintheword at gmail.com. We'd love to hear the treasures God has given you through His Word. You can listen to other episodes at our website, which you can find in the description below. Thanks for listening, and remember, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also.